Welcome back yet again my fellow Canaanites for another Halo Armory video, this one on the beloved Halo 3. And to be clear, this will just be Halo 3. I'm sure some people were curious whether I'd fold Halo 3 ODST into this, and the answer is no. That will have its own video, albeit in a slightly different format than we've done up to this point, but that's for then. For now, let's dive into the weapons, vehicles, and platforms that make up the Halo 3 UNSC Armory. Starting things off is a return of an icon, the Assault Rifle. Replaced with the SMG in Halo 2, the Assault Rifle was brought back in Halo 3 as part of an effort to rebalance the sandbox after seeing the changes spawning with dual-wieldable weapons had on Halo 2's multiplayer. Halo 3 introduces the Misria Armory MA-5C Individual Combat Weapon System, a slightly newer assault rifle compared to the MA-5B of Halo CE. Featuring a smaller 32-round magazine, the MA-5C still fires 7.62x51mm full metal jacket rounds at up to 900 rounds per minute. The reduced magazine size was designed to reduce jamming, a problem the MA-5B had due to the loss of spring strength over time. This wasn't the only change to the MA-5C, however, as it also features a redesigned, sturdier handguard and a new cowling to house its electronics. This new design reduces the weight of the weapon and increases pointability. Finally, the new barrel design is heavier, with a 1 in 7 twist to more effectively stabilize the bullet, meaning it's more effective at a greater range. When the MA-5C came into service is unknown, but it saw action as early as 2526, eventually becoming the standard issue rifle for the UNSC Marine Corps and Navy by the end of the Human Covenant War. Though not seen in Halo 3, the MA-5C can feature an underslung grenade launcher, such as the M301 40mm grenade launcher. Like the rest of the MA-5 line of rifles, the MA-5C features a digital ammo counter and compass. The BR-55 Heavy Barreled Service Rifle, also known as the Mammoth Stomper, is a heavy barrel variant of the standard BR-55. Produced by the Miseria Armory, the BR-55 HB entered service in 2548, quickly finding popularity in the Marine Corps and Navy, and finally overshadowing the M392 DMR in all UNSC service branches save the Army. Firing 9.5x40mm M634 experimental high-power semi-armor piercing rounds from a 36-round box magazine, the BR-55 HB is a select fire weapon with settings for semi-automatic, 3-round burst, and fully automatic firing. Firing up to 900 rounds per minute, the BR's impressive range and accuracy is enhanced by its standard-issue 2x magnification scope. Halo 3 introduces the M6G Personal Defense Weapon System, a Misria Armory-produced sidearm. In service at least as early as 2546, a modification package of the latest revision was issued in 2552 and saw widespread use during the invasion of Earth. The M6G is semi-automatic and fires 12.7x40mm semi-armor-piercing high-explosive rounds from an 8-round magazine. It can be equipped with more exotic ammunition, but only by mission conditional requisition. The M6 line of pistols has been in service for 140 years with little change to its design in that time. Primarily issued to officers and vehicle-slash-weapon crews, the M6G often comes with a SmartLink KA-2 2 times magnification scope, though this isn't functional in Halo 3. The Misria Armory M7 caseless submachine gun returns in Halo 3 with little change from its Halo 2 incarnation. It once again fires 5x23 M443 caseless full metal jacket rounds from a 60 round side mounted box magazine at a rate of 900 rounds per minute with an effective range of 50 meters. Originally issued only as an emergency weapon to vehicle crews, the M7 saw more widespread use during the insurrection favored by paramilitary groups and UNSC Special Forces for its effectiveness at eliminating insurgent forces. Simultaneously, it saw a rise in popularity among insurgents for the same reasons, notably its effectiveness in orbital habitats in urban environments. The SMG is difficult to control, but made easier thanks to its retractable stock. It can be issued with an M49 sound suppressor, though this is not seen in Halo 3. The Weapon System Technologies M90A Close Assault Weapon System is the shotgun of choice in Halo 3. 
sporting a very similar design to the M90 of previous games, the M90A's dual tubular non-detachable magazine only holds 6 8-gauge magnum rounds rather than the 12 rounds of the M90. It features an adjustable stock and pistol grip, and noticeably milder recoil than other DTM series shotguns. The M90A has an effective range of 40 meters. The Misria Armory Sniper Rifle System 99D-SA Antimaterial is a variant of the SRS-99 Sniper Rifle line and the variant used in Halo 3. Visually, it is almost identical to the variant of the 99C seen in Halo 2 and fires the same 14.5x114mm armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarded Sabo rounds from a 4-round attachable box magazine. The new muzzle brake, however, features an iron sight, one of the few differences between the 99D and 99C. Notably, its effective range is only 1500 meters, quite a bit shorter than the range of earlier SRS-99 rifles. The Misria Armory M41 service-to-service -service rocket medium anti-vehicle-slash-assault weapon, aka the Jackhammer or Spanker, once again returns for Halo 3. We've talked a lot about this weapon at length in previous Armory videos, so we won't spend a whole lot of time on it here. Still using the standard M19 102mm service-to-service missiles, fired from a pair of detachable barrels and featuring its 2 times magnification SmartLink scope, the Halo 3 iteration of the Spanker lacks the homing ability of Halo 2 or Reach's rocket launchers. Whether these features are purely for gameplay balance or if there are different variants of the M41 remains unknown. Halo 3 was the game that introduced the weapon-slash-anti-vehicle Model 6 Grindel-slash-Galilean non-linear rifle, aka the Spartan Laser, to the Halo universe. Produced by Misria Armory as part of Project Gungnir, the Spartan Laser moniker was born from the Gungnir class Mjolnir armor that was created in concert with the M6. The laser is man-portable and shoulder-fired, releasing a powerful solid-state laser beam when fired, capable of eliminating all manner of targets. It has even been shown to be powerful enough to penetrate a Phantom dropship completely. Its lethality is further amplified by its Weird 3 optical suite, which provides up to three times optical zoom for greater target acquisition. Though its cost at introduction was said to be ruinously expensive, preventing widespread distribution, refinement in production over time made it only extraordinarily expensive, at a cost of 218,000 credits. That's roughly the cost of four M12 Warthogs, by the way. Further complicating things is the fact that the Spartan Laser's PP-16979-AM-SH charger rarely accompanies the weapon into the field due to insufficiencies in the UNSC's logistics capabilities. During the Human Covenant War, the Spartan Laser was generally restricted to Spartan and ODST personnel. In Halo 3, the AIE-486H HMG is the machine gun of choice for the UNSC. Firing 7.62x51mm full metal jacket armor-piercing rounds at 600 rounds per minute, the heavy machine gun features a Gatling-style triple barrel design and has an effective range of 100 meters. The tripod mounting makes it capable of moving and being set up wherever it may be needed. Though unadvised by UNSC standards, the turret can be removed from its mount by Spartan personnel and carried across the battlefield to rip into enemies. The LAU-65-SGM-155 aka the Missile Pod is an Ushuaia Armory produced anti-vehicle weapon. From its portable mount, the Missile Pod can automatically lock onto enemy vehicles and aircraft, its self-guided missiles flying until they hit their target. The missile pod can also be removed from its base, at which point it will carry 8 missiles, which it can fire at a rate of 2 missiles per second. The M7057 slash defoiling projector, aka the flamethrower, makes its campaign debut in Halo 3. Produced by Misria Armory, the M7057 is a standard chemical flamethrower, firing a stream of volatile semi-liquid adhesive known as Pyrocene 5. The use of the flamethrower is, officially, for the rapid clearing of heavy foliage for in-theater construction and destruction of new or persistent growth. However, it has seen some usage on the battlefield during the Human Covenant War, frequently pressed into service as a primitive energy weapon. The use of this weapon against enemy targets has a notable psychological effect both on the enemy and the wielder. Though it has a replaceable fuel canister, the Halo 3 version of the flamethrower is treated as a heavy weapon and thus not reloadable. 
Wrapping up the weapons section, we again have the M9 High Explosive Dual Purpose Grenade, a fragmentation grenade with an effective kill radius of 5 meters and casualty radius of 15. From there, we dive into the UNSC's vehicle offerings for Halo 3, starting with the M274 Ultralight All-Terrain Vehicle, aka the Mongoose. Intended for Halo 2 originally, the Mongoose was formally introduced with Halo 3. This ATV has no weapons of its own, only a spot for a driver and potential passenger. Its powerful 1000cc liquid-cooled mid-engine mount 4-stroke hydrogen-injected ICE engine and heavy suspension mean it can be effectively used by Mjolnir-clad Spartan personnel. The Mongoose is intended for transport of personnel or cargo over a relatively short distance and finds particular use in areas with variable terrain. Though the rear cargo rack can be used for a passenger, this is generally unadvised by the UNSC. Still, when operated by a pair of Spartans, field observations have noted that the Mongoose becomes truly formidable. The M12 Force Application Vehicle, aka the Warthog, is the primary joint light tactical ground vehicle for the UNSC. Produced by AMG Transport Dynamics, the earliest iteration of the Warthog entered service in 2319 as the Z12 prototype, quickly earning a reputation as reliable and capable. AMG soon established a deal with the Colonial Military Administration to provide all of their land-based transportation needs, and the Warthog became a standard vehicle in the field. The most recognizable variant of the Warthog is the M12 Light Reconnaissance Vehicle, which sports a rear-mounted M41 Light Anti-Aircraft Gun, or Vulcan. The Vulcan fires 12.7 by 99mm armor-piercing rounds at 500 rounds per minute via an electronically powered linkless belt feed system. Several variants of the LRV exist, but one seen in Halo 3 is the M864 Arctic Warthog. Though armored or armed no different from its M12 cousin, the M864 is designed for operation in cold weather and features a snow white camo paint job. Though not seen in Halo 3 or any Halo game to this point, this Warthog has an additional variant known as the M864A, which features an enclosed passenger compartment and treads in place of wheels. Returning from Halo 2, the M12 G1 Light Anti-Armor Vehicle, aka the Gauss Hog, is a heavier armed Warthog variant. Featuring an M68 asynchronous linear induction motor, this Gauss cannon fires 25 by 113mm armor-piercing, limited penetration, frangible rounds. And finally, we have the M831 Troop Transport Hog, which can carry up to 10 passengers to and from the battlefield. In the lore, it has four additional variants, the M831A, B, C, and D, each with their own minor variations, though only the default configuration is seen in Halo 3. All Warthogs are powered by a 12.0L liquid-cooled hydrogen-injected ICE, which can achieve a top speed of 125 km per hour or 78 miles per hour, and feature a ballistic polycarbonate titanium carbon nanotube hull. The Warthog is truly a vehicle that can go anywhere and do anything. Halo 3 introduces Chalab's Defense Solutions M808C Main Battle Tank, a newer variant of the M808B from Halo's CE and 2. Still armored with ceramic titanium and featuring the standard M512 smoothbore high-velocity cannon, the main difference between the M808B and C is that the C typically lacks the coaxial machine gun, instead sporting an M247T medium machine gunner's pit. It also features an anti-mine detection suite. The M808 line of tanks are an impressive line, having entered service in 2218, though modern tanks bear little resemblance to these early models. The tank is powered by a hydrogen-burning turbine in the rear of the hull, which can be easily removed with minimal tools and lift equipment. With this engine, the Scorpion can achieve a top speed of 96.5 km per hour or 60 miles per hour, and travel a distance of up to 750 km or 466 miles before needing to be refueled. The M808 can be operated almost entirely by a single person, the tank's systems smart linking to a user's standard neural implant. The armored track pods can also be ridden by passengers into battle. The M313 Heavy Recovery Vehicle is a mobile assault, support, and recovery platform used primarily by the UNSC Marine Corps. Produced by Jotun Heavy Industries, this behemoth-class troop transport is designed to safely transport troops, equipment, and vehicles to and from the battlefield. 
Its ultra-high density armor plating, crane system, and mobile launch pad are designed to aid in its operation. When in the field, the Elephant can be defended by its M41 Vulcan and dual AIE 486H heavy machine guns. The M313 is the successor to the M312 Elephant seen in Halo Wars and has a civilian variant known as the Oliphant, which is primarily used for waste management. The Misria Armory's AV-14 Attack VTOL, aka the Hornet, was formally introduced in Halo 3 as the first UNSC aircraft usable by a player. Seen in service as early as 2524 during the Insurrection, the Hornet is a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle that operates via twin turbofan slash turbojet engines. Hornets can come in a number of configurations in the lore, including two-seaters or with nose-mounted cannons, but two primary variations are found in Halo 3. The standard attack Hornet featured in the campaign in Halo 3's vanilla multiplayer is armed with two Class II guided munition launch systems under the landing skids and a pair of twin-linked rotary cannons just seated above the canopy. The transport Hornet, first seen in the multiplayer map Avalanche, is a dedicated troop transport that trades the two missile pods for improved airspeed. It is also painted a snow white, though it is unknown if this is standard coloration or done for camouflage. Though the skids can only be ridden by two players in-game, in the lore, up to two people can ride each skid. Next up we have the Misria Armory Pelican. Halo 3 introduces the Dropship 77 Heavy Troop Carrier slash Infantry, a newer Pelican model that saw heavy use during the defense of Earth in 2552. In many ways it's identical to its D-77 predecessor, featuring nearly identical dimensions, wingspan, and troop base size. It's operated by a pilot, co-pilot, and crew chief, and can carry up to 20 passengers in addition to a medium or heavyweight vehicle such as a scorpion or warthog, two light vehicles such as mongooses, or up to six resupply pods. Its four vector pylons and ten maneuvering thrusters are powered by two main engines housed in the midsection of the dropship. Armament is primarily where the D-77H stands apart from its predecessors. It can feature a nose-mounted rotary cannon like earlier Pelican models, though its optional rear-mounted gun is often a heavier AIE-486H machine gun. Its wing-mounted missile pods, when present, no longer attach to hardpoints on the wings, but are integrated seamlessly into the fuselage. These two Anvil-2 air-to-air surface missile pods fire up to six missiles per pod at a time, making it extremely effective against enemy dropships. The D-77H-TCI has a civilian variant, the D-77C, which is used by police forces in major urban areas. We'll talk a bit more about this one in a later video. And that basically wraps up the vehicles, though Halo 3 does also feature the Albatross dropship on the map Sandtrap and the Longsword Interceptor slash Strike Fighter. However, there's nothing really to talk about here that we didn't cover in Halo 2's Armory video, or in even earlier videos in the case of the Longsword. Still, as you can see, Halo 3 really expanded the UNSC Armory as it did for the Covenant, which we'll be talking about real soon. Until that time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canaanites.